let us take up uh, the concept of pointers today. Now, first of all, uh, what are pointers? We can say that a pointer is a variable, right? A pointer is a variable which holds the address of another variable, right? So, from this explanation of the pointer, it becomes clear that a pointer can hold only addresses of other variables, right? Now, let us first of all compare the pointers with a normal variable, right? Now, supposing I have a variable which is int num, right? Now, I can store any value inside this num. It can be int num is equal to 10 or int num is equal to 20, whatever you want you can store. Now, supposing I have a pointer. Now, we will be uh, learning how to declare the pointers and all. Now, pointer variable you have, inside that pointer variable you cannot store values like this. You cannot store values, any numerical values or anything like this. This is wrong. Both these are wrong. The pointer variables can have only addresses of other variables. So, inside this pointer variable, I can store the address of this variable that is fine. Okay. Now, what do you mean by address? Now, in your computer, you have the memory, right. So, for each and every program, right, whatever you are writing, some memory is allocated depending on the variables that you declare, right. So, supposing I say int where 1, I declare this variable and I say where 1 is equal to 20. Now, what happens? It is actually inside the memory, a space is reserved for this variable. The name of the variable is what? var1, right. And the value is put inside the variable as 20, which you have given. Now, whenever a variable is declared or whatever you are doing, it is stored in your system, a address is given by the system automatically, that is a hexadecimal address, right. Now, supposing we say that the address of the variable, let us say is 1001, right. This is the address of the variable. You declare another variable int var2 and you put it as 30. Now, another space is reserved for this var2 and here you get the value 30 and here one more address is given to this, right. Now, when you declare a pointer variable, right, this pointer variable will be equal to 1001. We have to uh, put the address there, but supposing I say pointer variable is equal to 1001, what does that mean? This pointer variable is referring to this particular address 1001. And what is inside that address? It is 20, right. You make one more pointer variable and you say pointer variable is equal to 1003, okay. Now, this means that this pointer variable is pointing to this memory location 1003, understood, okay. Now, let us see, there are two things when you learn pointers, one is a static memory allocation and the other one is called a dynamic memory allocation, okay. Now, first of all, let us see what is the static memory allocation. Now, till now, whatever programs we have done without pointers, 
in all those cases the memory was allocated beforehand that is before <coughs> before the execution of the program there are two things one is compilation and the other part is execution right so c++ c++ is a compiler based language so first of all whatever code you write is compiled and then it is executed whenever the memory is allocated before run time this execution is also called as run time right so in static memory allocation the memory is allocated beforehand and that means it is allocated during the time of compilation so beforehand when i say here the memory is allocated beforehand means before actually running the program right so now when i say int num1 comma num2 comma num3 right and <clears throat> here the memory is allocated dynamically each integer occupies 2 bytes so the number of bytes needed for these integers are uh allocated during the time of compilation that is called a static memory allocation whether i am going to use these variables in my program or not irrespective of that the memory is allocated fine now you see what is a dynamic memory allocation dynamic memory allocation means the memory is allocated during run time during execution time or run time so now here the point is that uh, we may not know exactly like how much um what amount of memory how much amount of memory is needed for a particular variable so we want to allocate memory for that particular variable during run time right so suppose there is a variable right and we are not very sure whether it is going to occupy uh 4 bytes or 10 bytes or 100 bytes whatever there is a array suppose right so in that case supposing i have an array right and i say the size of the array is 100 right now the size of the array can be 100 or the size of the array can be 4 also or the size of the array can be 30 also right supposing this is a integer array supposing this is a integer array if the size of the array is 100 that means i can store 100 integers in that so 100 integers means 2 bytes for each integer so i need 200 bytes but suppose i have to store only 4 items in that i'll need only 8 bytes and i have to store only 30 items i will need only 60 bytes 2 bytes per number right okay now 100 4 and 30 this is the size of the array so this size i'm not very sure of when we are actually compiling the program the size of the array will be determined only during the run time so there is no point allocating 200 bytes for this array when someone is going to use only 8 bytes supposing i'll explain this see uh, there are supposing i say int int arr 1 and i put the size as 100 here right fine now what does this mean this is a normal allocation in this case a static allocation will be done and an array will be formed with 100 spaces that is in 100 integers can be stored in that but supposing during the program uh, i mean during the run time you ask the user how many records do you want to enter right now the user says he wants to enter only 5 records now that means only 5 integers 
So, phi records that is phi integers right will take how many space phi records here means let us say these are the marks of the students or something like this. So, I say marks right now five integers will take only 10 bytes whereas I have reserved 200 bytes here right thereby so, here what is happening is a wastage of 190 bytes in order to reduce this in order to avoid this we can do a dynamic memory allocation in which we will allocate only that much memory which is needed right and this dynamic memory allocation is done using two uh, operators one is new one is delete fine new and delete. So, whenever you want to allocate memory dynamically we use the new operator and for deallocating the memory allocated by a new operator we will use the delete operator whatever variable I mean uh, suppose you have a variable and you allocated the memory for that variable dynamically using the new operator then that memory can be deallocated only by using a delete operator otherwise it cannot be done right. So, uh, this is basically an introduction to pointers where we have seen what are pointers, what is to be stored inside a pointer right and what is the difference between a static memory allocation, dynamic memory allocation. Pointers are needed only for this dynamic memory allocation right sorry pointers can be used for uh, dynamic memory allocation whereas for a static one we do not need pointers right and uh, we have also seen the new and delete operators right. So, next session we will see how to actually declare a pointer, how to initialize a pointer and how the uh, address resolution is done with the help of the pointers.